What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So the S14 has been sitting dormant in the shop for about two months. We stole a lot of parts off of it for the Civic build. What do we take? The oil pressure sensor? Take a radiator cap went somewhere. Yeah, exactly. We took the ECU. Uh, it has a flat tire. Look at this. Yeah, this she's, is one. She's been sitting for a while, pal. It, and it's just neglected. Look at the bumper. Look at the bumper. Yeah. This is the... That was the a, original the... bumper that I got with the car like 12 years ago. Wow. It's only been put together about six times. Like I said, it's been sitting for a little while. Look at this in the radiator. It has started to grow. That looks like, I don't know what it even is. I wonder if like something got in there and it got stuck. Maybe that's, maybe that's a mouse. Maybe that's <laughs> a caterpillar. I don't know what that is, but that's that is disgusting. Light on there. Let's see what... Has anybody ever seen this in a radiator? Maybe it's a spider. Go I ahead. have the little Mighty Vac thing, the little suction <laughs> straw. Maybe we'll get that out. There's a lot of yucky stuff in there. There's just like a layer on top that coagulated. Yeah. Nice, nice backing. All right, so we added the new oil pressure sensor, which you guys didn't know, but we stole the oil pressure sensor out of the Honda. We stole the ECU out of the Honda. But before I put the ECU in this thing and actually get it started and running and basically drive it down the street, make sure it's good and load it in the trailer and take it to the drift event tomorrow. The big thing with the drift car is tires. You gotta, you gotta mount tires, you gotta swap wheels. These wheels have been on the car for, man, at least seven years. When we're out in New Jersey, I ran into Rudnick's wheel and uh, basically his lug studs actually broke my wheel, kind of chipped the tire and like the tire's a little bit mad. It's 2023, I think it's time to change it up a little bit. And the boys over there at Koenig actually hooked me up with a set of uh, their new heliograms. So we have a stack of Koenig boxes right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you these things already mounted because they just look, they look freaking sick. Look at this, look at how concave that is just looks sick. I love the color. I loved how my car looked previously on RPF1s. I've had some that I just had in the back and I drift on them every once in a while. And I feel like this really combines that style of the split five spoke with a super concave, aggressive looking wheel. Also the color on it just looks just, I love that color. Look at that. This is 18 by nine and a half. I love the packaging that they come in too. It's just like, you think you're, shipping a Bugatti wheel or something. These wheels are flow formed, so they are, uh, they're not a forged wheel, but they call them flow formed, which is kind of a, you know, forging process. So they actually have these knurled bead seats right here on the edge, and you could see a little bit of a raised uh, mounting barrel right there. And essentially what that does, is it allows you to run super low tire pressure without the risk of debeating. Obviously that's super important with like road course cars, drag racing cars, cars on the street, or drift cars. We were kind of planning on going up to the LZ uh, World Tour up in Canada this weekend. Some other things came up. Uh, Charles didn't have a passport. We've been working on the RSX. Didn't line up to get everything done to make it up there in time. And should have been a little bit better planning on ours, but Drift Colorado round four. This is the last one of the season. I haven't driven with any of my homies in Colorado, really other than like the fun events for like two years. I don't think I've been to a drift competition in two years other than the LZ thing. So yeah, this was gonna help me out quite a bit just on being able to run some low tire pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, front wheel mounted, mount some rears, and then we're gonna stick them on the car. And I can't wait to see how the back looks. I've had these wheels sitting around the shop for the past couple weeks. There hasn't been a reason to pull out the S14, but man, I've wanted to sit these on there because I just, I just wanna see that concave. before we put the wheels on it now is actually have to load another tune into the EMU black. So I stole the one out of the S14 to put it in the Civic. Before I pulled it out, I basically just saved my tune and then just plugged it into the Civic. And then now same exact thing, pull it out of the Civic, plug it into this thing, load the tune. And it's kind of a cool thing because technically if you had multiple cars, you could only really drive one at once. So like me, I have like the Supra, this thing, 
that thing, this thing, that are all gonna be on ECU Master EMU Blacks. And I think the Evo Wagon is gonna be on one here soon too. But it's nice, cause you can technically, you don't have to buy an ECU, you just buy a plug and play adapter and then just swap them between cars, you know, depending on what you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this thing in, load a tune on it, and then uh, fire it up, cause it's really heavy with flat tires, and then swap these wheels. And we gotta get this thing freaking loaded up, cause it's getting light. Tina's loaded up. See you guys in the morning. Well, <laughs> this isn't good. I uh, just dropped Garrett off at the airport on the way to the drift event, and my truck just said transmission not in park. We just hit some giant freaking bumps, and then now look at this nothing. Look at that door open, key doesn't do anything. I'm assuming something came unplugged. Oh man, well, this. <laughs> This sucks. I've been on the side of the road for about 30 minutes now, maybe 45 minutes right now. I have, luckily I had the power probe in the trailer. I got some tools in the trailer. I've checked the grounds. I've checked all of the connections going into the body control module. Nothing's disconnected. There's a bunch of wiring harnesses like in the driver's side wheel well. I haven't put the fender liners back in. So it's kind of a good thing. I was able to unclip all, all of those, plug them back in. Crazy thing was they literally happened like after I hit that bump. Really sucks being on the side of the road. I was doing the interior swap and then now we have a blend between like a half put back together with my old dash because we were having an issue with the new key with the new dash and so like everything's been apart, everything's been touched and I've went back through everything, made sure all the connections but essentially what it's doing right now is the ignition switch just doesn't do anything. Like you give it power. I disconnected the batteries for a second. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead, we'll connect these back on. The lights and stuff turn on. And you stick the key in the ignition, nothing. I wish I had the dash cam in here because literally the bump that I hit was like, it shook the truck. It was like you hit two curbs. It was crazy. The truck in front of me, like I seen him hit it and his whole trailer looked like it jumped. I hit it too because there's no nothing I could really do and then went along a little bit more, hit another set of bumps. It's almost like you hit like a rumble strip, giant rumble strips and literally right after that, lights came on the dash it said uh, transmission not in park the engine died all of the gauges were still working i basically coasted off to the side of the road over here luckily i was in a decent spot it just turned off a couple hours away from the shop my house my trailer we don't have any like my dad has a truck but then we need like another truck we need a truck to tow this truck and then another trailer to tow the other the trailer it sucks so making a little bit of progress so Right here, I believe it's uh, 60, no, I think it's 50 or 49. Is a 60 amp little fuse right there. And it was popped, so I put another one in it and I just watched it sizzle and pop in front of me. So, uh, definitely not getting power to the body control module, that is the issue. But now I think there's a short somewhere. Something is shorted, drawn power, got pinched, did something, it's not happy. Uh, I unplugged my seats, I unplugged the driver window thing, the window switch, all that other stuff. Obviously something shorted, hit something, rubbed something when I hit the bump. Uh, so I went ahead and I stole the fuse from the active steering, put that in there and it's been running for like five minutes. That was it, it was just that body control module, body power 60 amp fuse right there. So uh, that's kind of my dilemma, I guess. I don't know what to do if I should continue driving or, or not, but I'm gonna figure it out. I'll let you guys know. All right, so only a couple hours late. Uh, we are at the drift event. Again, this is the first time I've driven a Drift Colorado event in freaking years is what it uh, is what it feels like. So driver's meeting is going on essentially right now. So I'm gonna go uh, go try and do that. We made it to the track. You can hear people out there drifting. You can see the smoke. And uh, I'm only a couple hours late, but we made it and technically it is 2.30 in the afternoon and uh, competition for class A drivers or like the tandem drivers starts at uh, five. So right after they're doing like the singles competition, which is technically like a trailing tandem, you know, where it's like a slower thing. They're on track right now competing in their like top 29 bracket. And then I think there's only 10 drivers in, uh, in the A class, the tandem group. So I'm gonna go ahead and get S14 out, unload it, get some fuel in it. Let's get ready to drive. Charles is on his way. He had a shoot this morning that he went and did. So I'm gonna unload this thing. Get some drifting in. All right, so S14 is unloaded, got some fuel in it, check the tire pressures. This wheels just look so freaking good. That concave in the back is just so nice. So go watch some drifting.
which is kind of sketchy because but it hasn't done it did this to me the last time we were at uh ppir for a sin oh. so it did it remember we were like cruising yeah. through the piss it was just like it's just like you turn the key off but like when you're ripping it it doesn't care but it's only when you're like idling through the pits. But I don't have, I didn't have my laptop, so there's no like data log to see like what it was doing. But it literally, it's just like it, it shuts off. So interesting. I'm gonna look at a couple things. I think competition starts here in about 20 minutes. But at least I got four laps in with two laps. How with, does the course feel? I mean, it's a little bit big. I want to turn up the boost a little bit. It's like 14 pounds. So the Dude, first 20. run, the first run was on 11 pounds. But I need to go in and actually adjust the duty cycle on the table because it's not making. Yeah. More. When we were at sea level, I think it was making 15 or I think it was like 16 at the, the LZ thing when it like came alive. But out here, it's only making 14 on that same setting. So I think it just needs a little bit more, more duty. More duty. We'll get her, get her going. Holy sh! this thing is fast. You ever been in this car? No. Really? That was this my, was the first time? That, that was my first ride in the S14. That first entry was insane. I know it was only 11 pounds of boost, but straight at the wall. Yeah. Just like, it was like I was trying to do a little all right. I, if it was on 20 pounds, buddy, we'd be like, rap, rap. But like on eight, on 14, it was like, Rrr. all right. Buddy, look at the Koenigs though. I know, these Koenigs are so Didn't it change look it? Look at that. It changed look at it this car, dude. It, it looks so good with those wheels. I mean, that's just, that's a race car now. Shout out Koenig, dude. Shout out to Koenig. We need a Koenig sticker now. Yeah, we do. We need one. Koenig, right here. Right here. Right there. There. Real estate. Well, that's open. yours. Koenig, that's yours. It's time for competition. I played with the boost control. I added some duty cycle. I changed the buttons and uh, I think we're ready to go send it. I don't know what else to do. It needed a little bit more boost. We were on 11 pounds, turned it up to 14, sank it run better. Now we should be like 16 to 18, so we should be... Cooking. We should be... Cooking with gas, baby. We should be... We should be sending. <laughs> I gotta say I love that thing going, but you can just see right here after that late transition, that S14 just got, I mean, that's almost two buses. That is a huge, that is a huge deficit to make up when you're in that chase position on the bank. These are the fastest cars that we have out here at Drift Colorado, and this is the fastest track we have ran all year. So when you fall back like that, it's really hard to make up that proximity. We're gonna go to the judges and have them decide, and I'll tell you who the winner was. Absolutely, Simon, just to kind of piggyback on you. I mean, mistakes here just stack and stack exponentially. But here we go, shooting down the straight. We've got a good bit of distance between these two drivers as the FC throws it up the bank. He's, you know, mid-bank, looking a little shallow, with a bit of a weird bobble there, throwing a lot more angle coming into the infield. Trevor's definitely dialing him quite a bit harder. And through that transition right there, a good dive out of our follow driver, Trevor Jameson. But it looks like he had an issue there with a complete shutdown coming into bank number two, which will unfortunately zero his run, guys.
Houston in the lead. And that chase was not half bad either. I think they know that they are down there in the loser's bracket and they know that they are going to be fighting for it every chance they get. Yeah, absolutely. They definitely both turned their driving up from three to four and a half on this one. Getting going out of the gate, guys. I mean, I expect the second run of this battle to be a bit aggressive, a bit sassy. Trevor, we have seen compete before around the country. We've seen him on Drift Week. We've seen him on YouTube, right? I mean, he's absolutely going. Like he's got, he's got the experience. He's got the skill. And I'm excited to see him turn it up and see what he can do. And I'm excited to see what Jacob can do in the lead in that FC. I mean, both of these guys are looking good. They dialed it up pretty quickly for that second run. And I'm excited to see what this second run of this battle looks like, guys. we go coming down the straight we're gonna have that fc in the lead s14 in the chase they are gonna throw it into the bank here at colorado national speedway they're going to be making sure that they're staying high up on that bank with good angle look at the proximity from the s14 that might be the best proximity we have seen thus far it's really hard to get in there when you're going that fast here we are on transition not doing that late transition and getting very very close is that s14 oh we might have had some contact and we what looks going. like a great save out there. I mean, Trevor had every right to just smack the bejesus out of Jacob, and he spun with him. Let's take a look at this on the replay here. We see that FC making his transition right here, and then as he hits that bump, that can really unsettle the car. And once you hit that bump, you have to get back in it and make sure you're on the right line. It looks like he feels as though he's at too much angle and not at the right spot on the bank, and it just ends up looping it. But you can see that S14 for Trevor doing an expert job making sure he stays on that left foot brake and spins out with him instead of going right into the side of him. We could have lost an FC today. You okay? Look at that. Oh. Um, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm just, it has a cut. Like, it's just turning off. Like, it didn't turn off when I was next to him. Everything was fine. But the run before that, I was behind him on the bank, and my car literally was just like, boom, turned off. But I was pedaling it. When I'm wide open, it's fine. So the next run, when I was behind him, I, so I stayed wide open, it was fine. But then he spun, but I didn't touch him. He hit the cone, and then I think he hesitated a little bit, bobbled, and then I was right there, and we kind of spun together. So just a light tap, no contact. I don't even think we touched each other. Really? Huh. I need to figure out that cut. I was going, I was sitting there, like on the laptop, because I had it logging. I was looking at it, and he's like, hey, we're next. I was like, uh. And then as soon as like they were calling me over there, I found it, and it was like, fuel cut active and I was like oh shit I need to find this but where the hell is it at because there could be fuel cuts of this or that or whatever whether it's a safety or so that's what you're looking for now so I'm going to try to look at the log um, hey good I, W though I think I'm about oh did I win I, yeah you won okay cool uh, I need tires so if you could do the tires <laughs> while I swap the thing look at look at those things freaking look at that perfect look alignment look at that alignment right there buddy that alignment's sick all right, so we won the last battle. Uh, got a little close, kind of going through the thing, and he hit a cone, and then I hit the cone, so we got a little bit of damage on the S14, but, but that's fine. Um, I think it's time to go back out there. I don't know. They're doing like a double elimination. So the guy who I won against, he technically went to a different bracket, and now they're battling to battle to this other bra bracket. So that was already top eight, so I'm already like top four. So two more battles at least to figure out four or first and second, and then after that, then maybe another battle. So three battles more to get like number one, but uh, the car's ripping, it's feeling good. Uh, the freaking boost, uh, it was oil pressure protection, which it didn't go to zero, it just went to like, had like a little dip on the on the throttle. The protection was just set maybe a little bit high, I just turned it off because I don't want it going in the wall because it turned off and you know, it's just been a fiasco ever since it started doing that. So back out on grid. <laughs>
Yep, we've got Trevor Jameson lining up for the lead, Will Rangel lining up for the chase. Both of these guys have S14s, and those are cars for sure. I'm honestly not sure anymore what engine that lead car has. Um, Trevor Jameson's that green S14 up there. I think it was a VK56 with a turbo or something last time. I knew it was a little bit out there. But we can see he's a little low on the bank here coming around. Will is a little higher and still kind of maintaining proximity with a bobble coming into the infield. Oh, and is that a straighten? Did they both shut down there? And it's looking like we have both of the drivers shut down. I'm having a hard time seeing whether or not Trevor shut down, and that's why Will shut down, or both of these guys just independently kind of gave up. Maybe we're having it, having in some issues over there. That might have been why Trevor was so low on the bank. Maybe the car's shutting off or something. We'll take a minute, get yeah, that you figured see right out. On that transition, it seems like the bank has been taking people out today. <laughs> Sounds like a wastegate is stuck open. That front one's just wide open. Damn. Or it just hot. Maybe that's why you should water cool your waste kits? Maybe. That sucks. So I just cut it so there's no line going to the bottom. So we'll see if it adding boost to the top will shut it. for his lead run against Trevor. Remember, Trevor's car shut off in run number one of their battle. He's already at a heavy deficit. That car may or may not even be working completely 100%. And off the line, here we go. We've got Will Rangel, one of the nicest guys out there. Trevor Jameson, one of the YouTubiest guys out there in Colorado, um, throwing it up the bank. TJ's car definitely appears to be working this time as he's trying to put some work in on Will, but Will is just doing his thing out there in the lead, being phenomenal, being fast, screaming along with eight cylinders of American Fury. And it almost looked like a little bobble there out of Trevor. Obviously not on our screen and unfortunately, there. It looks like it all it's shut down there. It looks like TJ's car has shut off yet again. No, uh, no boost. It made like a little bit of boost at the end of the track. Over, like right coming off the bank, it was like, and then I let off a little bit, and it just fell right out. So it's literally like an NA two J. We're gonna try to put some air on the top of the gate and just push it back close. So technically, which one is that? It's this guy right here. Yeah, the wastegate is just blown open, so it's like seized. So I'm gonna try to push it back down if that makes sense, but. We have a minute. I think like technically like right now I already used my competition in five minutes. That battle was like after these people battled was supposed to be my battle. So basically I had two laps to fix it. At this point I don't there's no way to like fix that. So we're done. Damn. I was ripping too. Like I, I, I you know, couple, first couple laps, get the nerves out. You know, the first one had a little bobble after that. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm back. I'm ready to rip. We need to get this for anything because that's nice. That's fire. We yeah. need that. Huge shout out to After Hours after our Autosports for uh, loaning us that. We just grabbed it out of their trailer. And yep. They said, here, grab this. They said, here you go. In our hour of we... need. Hot, hot, 
hot. hot. Uh, the wastegate tube, I just took it off. I just want to see if I could look in there and see if it's open. And then if I could jam a screwdriver in there and push it closed and then put a zip tie on the screwdriver and hold the wastegate up, then maybe we could go drive. <laughs> You know what it really sucked is like driving all the way to Canada for yeah. this to happen. Cause it was like, we were going to Canada this weekend or we were gonna do this. I just wonder if like they just got so hot from there just being, just being hot. That is a very tough job. Being a wastegate behind a 2J, like that's a serious job. These ones, it, it just didn't work. It seized up, it did the thing. I wish we had another wastegate. You know what we need? We need to put some Garrett weights, wastegates on here. Some GVW 44s. GVW45s, and maybe that'll help it out. Get out of there. Yeah! Get, get out of there, you son. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Uh-oh. Oh! Well, you know what that is? Either that's a piece of a melted valve or a rock. That's a melted piece of something. Is it? Yeah, right melted? there. Can you see I, that? I can see that, yeah. Is it a rock or is it melted? I don't know if it's a rock or if it's if it's melt. Let's get it out. Let's get it out of there. You get out of there. I'm gonna get it out of there. Get it out of there. Watch me get it out of there. Buddy, we're back in business. Where did it go? We need somebody to help us identify this. I think that's a rock. I, it's either a rock or it's a melted piston or a melted valve. Honestly, if the wastegate would have just opened again, if it would have just opened again like it's supposed to. It's hot! <laughs> you know what it is? It's hot. Do we stick it in the cooler for a minute? Melt some bottles, dude. It's fine. Of. Hey, BPA, melted BPA, it's good for you. Don't tell me to get it out of there. You know what's more important? My fingers. Honestly, that's doing it. Really good. You know how I like you know how I like how I like my Turbo Smart 44 mils? On the rock. On the rocks. On the rocks. On the rocks. Wastegate is back on. We don't know what that pebble, like the pebble, whether I'll put I'll post I, a picture right here. Like what, what do you, you guys think that is? What is it? Like is it is it a rock? Is it a melted valve? Is it a melted piston? Is it is it a melted turbo gasket? Like what is it? Like that's kind of weird. If the wastegate would have just like opened again, it would have been fine. Like being up here driving, obviously I was I was kind of bummed because we didn't go to Canada. Just because everything, like Charles didn't have a passport, we didn't plan. Because it was kind of like up in the air, are we going or are we not? We didn't have tires, we didn't have merch, we didn't have a lot of things. So this was kind of like my I'm gonna go get it out of my system. I wanna go drive. We came out here, and as soon as I did like my first lap, I was like, I was stoked. This thing just works. This has been the setup here for like six years. It needs like a refresh and some like fine tuning. So we got some things coming up next month and uh, the RSX is getting pretty close. Uh, I'm pretty stoked on that thing. We might be taking a trip with the RSX. We might be going to Australia. Stay tuned. valuable lesson today here at the Drift Colorado Championship round four, very last one of the season, the first one that I've driven in four years. Things are important. Wastegates are important. You are important. Me? Those guys. No, oh, oh, oh. oh <laughs> not, oh, not oh. you, Charles. <laughs> Those guys right there. Things matter. Wastegates and pebbles matter too. And uh, boost control matters too. Uh, car did great other than that one little issue, but you know, what do we do? Do we put a, do we put like a, sh a screen on the bottom of the thing so rocks don't go get in there? Do we recirculate them? Do we put them out of the hood so the raindrops could get in there, not pebbles? I had a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, watching me drive, actually getting out on the thing. Now the next challenge is, can we freaking get home in the truck? Obviously you can see I'm in the middle of an interior swap. I think since we replaced that fuse, the reason was because in the previous video of the truck swap, I essentially melted a wire behind the dash with my body control module. It kind of singed that fuse. And then when I hit the dip, it, it like just broke. Finally, it was like, little well, hanging out by a thread. I hope that's what, <laughs> what it is. If not, we got some big problems. So hopefully we make it home. Appreciate you guys watching. See you next one.